Hello again, I am Blunty. This, of course, is the ROG Ally, and if you're here, you already know about it because either you searched for this video, found it linked somewhere ROG Ally related, or indeed are a regular to my channel here, and so have seen me boasting a metric buttload of videos all about it already. I think it is neat! But, as neat as it is, it is also still a fairly unusual form factor for a mainstream Windows-based gaming device there. This style of device is of course starting to become more popular and uh, coming from more and more corners of the industry, but for the moment it's still relatively niche. And that comparative rarity does mean some potential physical compatibility issues. I mean, power-wise we're cooking, I can bust out 1080p 60fps and a bunch of games I can run full fat PC VR, I can even kick some ray tracing around for poops and giggles, I can even use it as a standalone live streaming device as I demonstrated in yesterday's video, but there's one big difference between this thing and a gaming capable laptop, the kind of device it shares much of its internal engineering with. Because, of course, it's a handheld device, obviously, and its primary physical input method is a set of standard gamepad inputs. There is no keyboard, there is no mouse. And sure, if you're docked, you can easily have both of those things, and that does indeed work fantastically. But even without these physical, standardized input accessories connected, basic navigation around the Windows UI is handled pretty smoothly enough with either the touchscreen and or using the thumbsticks and gamepad buttons to emulate mouse input. There's even several different ways to summon Windows' own built-in virtual keyboard. In many cases, tapping on a text input box will automatically summon it, or you can swipe up to summon the taskbar and launch it from there. You can even use a hotkey combo set by default as the left back button and up on the D-pad. If you're in the desktop control mode, you can summon it instantly, or you can also bring it up with a shortcut button in the command center overlay, which itself has a dedicated button on the device to summon it at any time. So text input when you need to write a little note or you know type in your login details and all that sort of stuff. Easy peasy really. Windows even lets you switch the style and position of this keyboard if you like. However, this is sold as a gaming device that is its primary function and an on-screen keyboard is hardly a solution for a lot of games that rely exclusively, primarily, or perhaps are just designed to be better with a mouse and keyboard input. So what do you do then? Well, the first thing I do is do that thing where I thank you for popping into my content here, and especially for those of you appeasing our robot mind overlords by doing the thing where you thumb and you comment and you sub and you bell. My question for commenters today is, what games do you play on PC where a controller just isn't an option? Either for you personally, you think mouse and keyboard is far better. If you play FPSs, you can sit aside. We all know first person shooters work better with mouse and keyboard. We can take that as given. I'm talking about other cases. Or maybe there's a game you really, really love that just doesn't have controller input at all, so it's not even an option, even if you wanted to. Let me know in the down below. And of course, thank you as always to the extraordinary support from my Patreons. You people are sweethearts. You know this, I know this, now everybody else knows it too. So, back on topic. The Ally itself has dual modes for the controller. You can switch between these at any time, no matter what you're doing, by using the command center overlay, the desktop mode, and the gamepad mode. The first emulates basic mouse functionality, as well as some handy keyboard inputs. Like by default, it'll do enter on one of the buttons, page up and down for scrolling around. There's even one for taking a screenshot. You combine this with the on-screen keyboard, and it's a pretty practical way to navigate Windows and the various storefronts like Steam or Epic or GOG, or indeed for those games that have their own dedicated standalone launchers. It is occasionally a little bit clumsy, but it does get the job done. And the gamepad mode, well, as you might imagine, it just makes all the buttons and joysticks and stuff act like a gamepad. In fact, as far as any launcher or game goes, it just it's recognized as a standard Xbox gamepad. But in the case of some games, like my representative MMORPG here, New World, which itself has absolutely zero support for any kind of gamepad input, the mouse emulation and the on-screen keyboard input is simply not a practical or useful way to try and interact with this game at all. So what do you do? Well, the community of gamers themselves offer solutions for this. As this is a game on Steam, you can create a custom Steam input controller configuration. Or easier still, download a pre-made one from one of the many available in the community. These options have been around for quite some time already. In fact, these have been around since the game was in beta. A few of these are even set up by quite popular YouTubers. And if you like, you can download these and then still customize it to your own personal taste if you find out the way they set it up isn't quite to your liking. Now, it's it's been a while since I last played New World and I've never played with a controller, uh, aside from just briefly testing it back in the beta days. Oh, what's the controller feel like? Um, so forgive my clumsy gameplay here, but the point is it works and it works surprisingly well. 
Text input for chat is still a bit awkward, and I'm not sure how well trying to do high-level content would go, but if you just curled up somewhere comfortable, and you're just doing a bit of material farming, or crafting, or you're leveling up your skills, or whatever, or you're doing some exploration, or you're doing some simple stuff like uh, fetch quests or something, or whatever, this is totally an option for you. Moving on to The Sims 4, a game I don't actually play, so forgive the clumsy gameplay again, but it is a useful touchstone for a different style, a different kind of custom control input. The Sims 4 also entirely lacks any native controller support on PC whatsoever. But here, given the non-action combat-based gameplay, we don't even need to fuss around with custom controller configurations with Steam or whatever. The default desktop mode on the Ally works fine, just in its default mode, without any fiddling or further customization at all. You just go. We combine that with the touchscreen itself, which is a quick and easy way to tap on the various icons on the interface that bring up other interfaces for you to interact with. And I feel like that's a pretty practical way to go with this one. Next up, Surviving Mars. While technically not an RTS game, it does look a lot like one, and it shares a control scheme that's common to many of those, and, and games of this general presentation type and general input style, it's common to a lot of different games that present like this. And here too, I could just use the standard mouse emulation mode to engage with the basic functions just fine. This game does happen to also have a pretty competent controller-only mode, but my point is, for games of this style, but without that concession to controller input modes, yes, it is straightforward and easy to interact with them, without a whole bunch of fussing and fiddling and whatnot. It might get a little more awkward for games that, you know, rely on the mouse generally, but uh, also make heavy use of keyboard hotkeys, for example. But that too can be worked around by customizing either using the Steam input or the Ally's own controller customization mode, and you can do this individually for different games. You can have it switch to different custom modes for each individual game, if you like, so you don't have to try and make one that works with everything. And you can accommodate several useful keyboard shortcuts into the control scheme on any game you like, which, combined with using the back buttons as modifiers, should be plenty of options for even games with quite heavy use of keyboard shortcuts. The only job left then is for you to make all these customizations part of your muscle memory while you're playing. <laughs> and when even these various options aren't enough, either Steam input or the Ally's own various extensive customization options just aren't the path you want to take or aren't quite working for you in the way you want them to, this is the point where I remind you this is a standard Windows device, so there is always a whole bunch of third-party options, like the very popular choice of Joy2Key, combined with the Allies desktop mode and keyboard shortcut customizations and whatnot. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know whether you run into too many games you can't find a path forward for, for using the Allies own controllers. So there you are. Hopefully that answers some of the questions I've been getting from some of you about various games that do not rely on controller input as their primary choice or the best choice or even a choice at all. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you as always again to the patrons scrolling on by. I am Blunty. Uh, did I say thank you for watching yet? I'll say it again. I'll say it three times. Thank you for watching. <laughs> I'll catch you next time.